He's crafty. All right, what's up? Welcome to this episode of He's Crafty. I'm here with Blake from Pacific Mold Design. Blake, how's it going, man? It's good, man. It's, uh, I think we're a uh, solid 92 degrees here in Southern California, and I'm without a mask, so I apologize. I'll just uh, talk like this, you know, just keep our I distance. I think we're good, dude. I think we're I think we're exactly six feet apart right now. <laughs> Fair enough. So a few years ago, I made uh, you know I made these wall of skulls, and um, you know when I made them, I bought some other molds and stuff of uh, skulls, and they, they just were not the best or whatever. You know what I mean? I ended up using dollar store skulls. So when I saw your molds, they totally uh, inspired me to redo that wall because they look they're they're awesome, man. Your molds are really really awesome uh well, if people were out there wanting to cast these molds what, what, do you, what do you suggest them using yeah i think um you know a lot of our inspiration came from a, a couple of things that you touched on i mean the idea that you would go to a, a big retailer and take apart something that already exists and then you know potentially be using something that has kind of a weird smile or a full face mandible you know, our intention was not to try to own the space. It was to try to provide something at a realistic cost or price point. You know, we're not uh, the, the most premium. We don't use premium materials like silicones or latex with jackets for that matter. We keep it super simple. You know, they're dump molds. You add your material and off you go to the races to let it cure and you're and off to cleaning and post work for, for staining like you mentioned. Um, you know, a lot of our customers will come back to us and ask, hey, what? You know, what's the lightest, what's the, the most cost effective, hey, what's going to be good for my outdoor garden? You know, it's really yes, yes, and yes. You can use concrete, you can use two-part uh, urethane foams, you can use uh, plaster of Paris, which is an effective way. You know, it, it doesn't stop there. I mean, with the exception of super hot materials like resins that, that can tend to fuse to the ABS plastic, you know, you, the sky's the limit, uh, as long as it's not something that gets terribly hot, if that makes sense. So really, it's up to the imagination of the artist. You don't have to load the full mold. Oh, right? totally. No, no, you're absolutely right. I think, I think the biggest mis you know misconception is that you know we provide this this large uh, bucket, right, where you're going to load a five bucks worth of material, and now you're looking at a crazy spend over the course of a call it a, you know eight by ten foot wall. And you're going to do a catacomb build. It's going to cost you a fortune. But the the does the mold design itself was was created where you could actually you know, call it partially load, you know, the area and get a really wild dimension to your part, right? So if you think about loading a mold halfway, maybe you only want to show the eyes and the teeth because, you know, you want it to look like it's sticking out of the wall or pushing through some fabric. You know, you can do that by only utilizing half the mold. You know, you fill a big 11 inch mold like this, it's going to look like some flipping, you know, you know, you, you cave-like, caveman type deal. <laughs> but it's, it becomes dangerous to hang something that heavy. So be mindful, you can use half the mold if you want. You can use a quarter of the mold, it's up to you. I use plaster of Paris, and yep. then you know I'm sticking them into spray foam, so it's pretty much secure. Like, I know people have asked me, you know, about they wanted to do a skull black backsplash and whatever, you know, like, so, so something like that, how would you suggest hanging something like that? Um, I actually have a tile and stone background, so the premise of where my wife and I, when we started making molds as a, you know, from hobby to, we still call it a working hobby, um, uh, you know, putting things on backsplashes, putting things out in, in working environments like showers and outdoor bomb beams and swimming pools and fire pits, you know, a lot of that can translate well to the tile and stone industry because depending on the material you're using to cast the products, um, a lot of that adhesive will, will work well. As an example, if you're building a fire pit and you're using hollow block or cinder block, um, a lot of times we'll, we'll suggest that people use concrete um, and a non-modified thin set. It's the same stuff you'd use to slap uh, tiles to a wall or tiles to a floor. Um, just make sure that you test your area and make sure that the material sticks well. With plaster, you know, plaster loves itself just like silicone does. So we'd rather recommend, you know, embedding a wire hanger or use some sort of a high yield or high, high, uh, I guess a high stick or high traction adhesive, like a Liquid Nails Extreme or something like that. How about new stuff? You got some new stuff that's uh, in the mix? Got any oh, previews yeah. of anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we've been putting some teasers out. I got scolded a little bit because I told my wife I'm done making skull stuff, 
and then I lied. So I, I ended up coming up with some new things. This is our new, call it the three-dimensional damask. We got a lot of inspiration from some of the uh, Gothic online groups. And yeah. We saw some of the uh, the wallpaper, and we were like, you know what? What would be cool? What would be more cool than an actual like touch and feel three-dimensional damask that you can cast and hang in your home uh, and really take it to that next level? So we have two things. This is the skull damask, and then of course I'm going to back up just a few inches. I'm going to show you the death moth corner ped uh, uh, pediment that we created. We were actually fortunate enough to connect with a really awesome artist who was able to put this together for us. And that big bad boy is 28 inches on its longest axis and it will sit beautifully right above a doorway or you can even get this up into a corner as an example up top somewhere nice and high. Tinity for, you know, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of being an artist, right? If, if this isn't your forte, it's shaping and crafting and ceramics. This is what we do. And this allows you to take all that work that we put into it, put it into a mold, pop them out and get to your color. That's really what we're trying to do here. So, so two part foam, that's acceptable to use, you know? Yeah. Yep. I would say that two part foam is, uh, is great as long as you're using a good, uh, wax release agent, make sure that you're getting in there and lubricating those molds to make sure that uh, the tacky stuff does not adhere to the, the inside of the mold. So you hate to, it's, it's not cheap to do that. So you want to make sure that you can get it out. So. Um, let's see. So I got one more question. What do you call a pile of kittens? The perfect seat? Uh, close. A meowton. <laughs> Write that one down and keep it. Okay. You're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. New dad. I have a lot to learn. So we're awesome talking to you. I noticed, uh, what do you got a coupon code back there? Give me five. Yeah. Give me five. Yes. Obviously, I'm taking the time to speak with me. If you'd like to, to share some love, are you able to see it says Gibby 5 all smashed together? G I M M E 5. It's 5% off any order of all of our molds across the board. It Indeed. has been awesome talking to you. And then sit back and enjoy the hellfire of the wall of skulls that I will construct now. <laughs> right on. Thank you so much for your time. Right, thank you, dude. Thanks for coming on, man. No worries. Anytime. So the first time I built this for Halloween, it was pretty much just skull stuck to a wall. It evolved with spray foam and then some lights. And I was going for this wicked rear projection effect on my garage. So there's two different plasters I use. The first one you can pick up at any craft store. The second one you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. The first one sets pretty quick and the second one takes up to an hour. You have to let them both sit for at least 24 hours before you can stain or paint them. This is the mold release spray that Blake talked about. Just pour your mold, let the thing dry, and then there you go. You got a nice looking skull. Get a sheet of plywood, cut them into two foot sections so they're easier to handle. We're gonna paint it black and then paint it gray. If you notice here, I have foam sheeting on the plywood. This is not a necessary step. I did it on the first wall. On this one, I would just paint on the plywood. I just used orange string lights like you can get for Halloween. Run them along the wall and tape them into place. One thing I didn't do on the first one I learned is to drill this hole in to run the plug through. Apparently I did not learn to test the lights before they go on the wall. Spray foam time. And we use at least 10 cans for this wall right here. So you're gonna spray down your foam covering your lights, making sure you get all of those covered. And then you can randomly start placing skulls throughout the foam. Now originally I was going to just stain all these skulls first and then place them in the foam, but I think I'm just going to do this all as one big thing. I'm going to paint and stain this thing. You're going to let this dry for 24 hours. It's going to come out looking like this. And I used a gray acrylic for the wall and then a red mahogany stain for the skulls. You start brushing stain on your skulls to bring out the details. Also will uh, give it that aged look so that they're not so bright. I brushed down the gray acrylic on the walls. I'm gonna go back later on and hit it with some gray spray paint in areas to darken it up. I went through with a small foam brush and I stained the eye sockets and nose sockets of these skulls. I also then went full metal and threw on some fake blood. Look at that. We're in the home stretch now. Last couple things I did was hit it with some gray spray paint to darken up the lighter spots. 
and add some dead vines for, you know, that dead vine effect. And then just plug it in. And there's your finished product. That's what just the orange string lights lit up. But you can also go and uh, light it with a red spotlight from up front. Now that is metal. I'd like to thank Blake from Pacific Mold Design. And thanks everybody for watching this episode of He's Crafty. <laughs>